Hello and welcome to another episode of A New Direction. My name is Fitz Houston, your host, and have we got another great informational episode for you today. Before we start, as always, we begin with prayer. Father God, thank you so much for this show, Lord. Bless everyone working with this show, Lord. Bless everyone who is watching this show, for we know it's no accident they turn to this station at this appointed time, that they may be blessed by the information they're about to hear. In Jesus' name. Now, today's episode, you've heard all types of, for those who've been watching the show, of course, you've heard episodes about uh, pornography in the workplace, uh, pornography's effect on marriage, pornography's effect on men and women, uh, the, in the statistics. Well, I've got some updated information, and also, if you notice, today's episode is titled, A Message for the Parents. Now, parents say, what, a message for me? Well, remember now, parents, when do you get the most uh, uneasy with your kids? When you talk about what? S E X. You know, what else? We're going to say the word today. Sex. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's going to talk about sex. Yes, we're going to talk about sex because that's the one topic when you talk with young people, if they feel like they can't talk to you, they're going to talk to their friends. They're going to talk to people on the street. They're going to get some right information, some wrong information, some dangerous information. So the whole purpose of this show is to give you information. If you want to have them sit down with you and watch it, feel free or watch this show, memorize it and talk to them. I don't care how you talk to them. The information that you, I'm about to bring forth in this episode is specifically for parents to understand how to talk to a young, young person. Now, why should you talk about it? Other than the obvious, of course, uh, when the teenage years or the years where the, the, the hormones are flowing, both girls and boys, and in my other episodes, like you say, the girls and boys in the elementary school, they hate each other. But then here comes middle school. All of a sudden, the girls are walking around. <laughs> And the guys are walking, going, hey, baby, what's up with you? All that's going on in the middle school. Now, the hormones are flying all over the place. That's usually where the most questions start flying as well in the middle school ages. If they don't get the answers in middle school, by the time high school rolls around, there's no telling what they're going to know because they're going to be asking all kinds of questions during the middle school years. And that's when the parents need to say, what, are, uh, what have you been learning in school today, in health in particular? Uh, and that can open the door because usually, oh, we talked about, you know, they talked about some sex stuff. What, what kind of sex stuff? Now, usually they say, oh, we have to talk about this. And you say at that point, yes, we do have to talk about this because I want you to learn the truth about stuff. Now, first of all, even though this show is about pornography addiction, that also usually starts in the middle age school years, the teenage years. That's the only time where the body's feeling all these new sensations, both girls and boys. They're feeling new sensations, sexual arousal. Oh, what is this feeling? Now, that's a natural part of your body's transition from childhood into puberty into teenage years, all that's, that's quite natural. Now, if they don't understand that and there's nobody to explain what's going on, that's where misinformation can kind of get things a little confusing and the wrong information can go to other things, which I'll talk about in just a minute. So that's where, if you have teenagers right now, that's the first place you first start being open to talk about it because if there are problems in that area and you sit down and talk with that person, you can go from that point on. Now, as far as, before I get into the other information about it, let me just give you some statistics, <coughs> excuse me, that are telling you about pornography's effect on that age group. Uh, as far as children's exposure to pornography, uh, the average age of the first internet exposure to pornography is age 11. The largest consumer of internet pornography, ages 12 through 17, 15 to 7-year-olds have had multiple hardcore exposure. That's 80% of the 15 to 17-year-olds. A hardcore exposure means they've gotten to the websites. Have you ever, ever seen triple X? Not just X. Triple X means you're actually seeing full-out sexual situations on video or on Internet. 80% of 15 to 7-year-olds have been exposed to that. Uh, of the 8 to 16-year-olds, who have viewed pornography online in some way, 90%. So 90% of ages 8 through 16 have viewed some sort of pornography online. And when? During homework. So just don't say, I'm doing my homework. And you go down, you're watching the game, or you're doing this, whatever. And then you've been gone two or three hours, and they're upstairs doing their homework. And are they really doing their homework? Or are they doing their Porn work. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, with the way the technology is today, iPods, MP3s, all this stuff can be downloaded from computers into small devices. You're thinking they're sitting there bopping and listening to the music. They could be watching the porn right in front of you if you're not curious to know what are you watching. 
uh, what are you working on? Now, of course, teenagers are very quick because I work in the school district and I know some kids when they're on a computer, they know that thumb is real quick on the mouse. They'll hit that little minimize up in the upper right corner so fast as soon as you open that door, that screen zooms down to uh, Science 103. And as soon as you walk out the room, close the door, whoop, there goes the porn back. Because you're not looking at the computer, you're just saying, what are you working on? Oh, yeah, you're working on all that? Okay, I see you. Keep, keep good work. Keep up what you're doing. Now, if you're really looking at the computer when you go into the room to see what's going on, you're not just looking at the screen, but you're looking at the minimize bar at the bottom. Because if something has been minimized for you to leave and been made large again, then, of course, the little icons are across the bottom of the screen. And that's just one way. I mean, there's, kids are very smart with this stuff. So don't let them think that I'm telling you all their secrets because they've got secrets beyond what I'm sharing. I'm just telling all parents just to be more aware of what's going on because if 90% of the uh, uh, teenagers are viewing it during the homework time, that's the time parents are thinking, well, I'll do this or that while they're doing their homework. So you want to make sure they are doing the homework, and that's what a parent can do there. Uh, other statistics. Of the 17-year-olds who would freely give out home addresses over the Internet, that's 29%. Seven to seventy, uh, seven to seventeen-year-olds who would freely give out email addresses, fourteen percent. And like I said in early episodes, there are a lot of pornography pop-ups intentionally attached to child websites. I mean, Disney Channel, Pokemon. I mean, the channel is not the one that's attaching the pornography sites. It's the porn sites. They know how to go in and attach their sites to an innocent site that you're watching and you're going to close it down. And as soon as you go to close that down, a pornography pop-up pops up. And then that's intentional because even though they were watching a site that is perfectly innocent, nothing wrong with that, but then they go to close it, it's made to pop up as you're closing the perfect site, here comes the temptation site. And that's no accident. So these are the different ways. There are many programs that are porn blockers that parents can buy for the computer, for the home computer or the computer that they want to let their young person use. You can put these porn blockers on the actual computer so that any pornography site whatsoever comes up, that software will block that site. Um, continuing on now, with, with, when you're dealing with young people as well, uh, some other statistics that I've come up with. Now, of course, in other episodes, I've kind of tied up with uh, pornography statistics in women, and I tied that as far as young people because uh, they will grow up to be young women. Now, women, as far as women, 13% of women admit to accessing porn at, at work. 70% of women keep their cyber activities secret. 17% of all women struggle with porn addiction. See, many, all these episodes I've done on pornography, I've had a few people tell me on the street, well, how come you never talk about the women? And I did do one episode specific, specifically for women, but I do want to include as many statistics as possible so that women understand I'm not leaving you out. Women do deal with sexual addiction as well as the addictions of men. It's just the men are more addicted to the visuals and women are more addicted to the toys and other things like that. But the sexual fantasy, both things cause, still warps your sense of of how you view a loved one or what your expectations in a relationship are.